let's learn how to create gorgeous Mama, Papa and Baby Bear SVGs for print-on-demand in Illustrator in this super simple tutorial. With Illustrator open, let's go to File, New, and let's just create a basic web large document. Click Create. So we're going to create our bear using a series of shapes and lines that we then connect up at the end. So to get started, come over to your ellipse tool, check here to make sure your fill is white and your stroke is black, and we're going to draw out three ellipses. The first is a larger oblong ellipse. The second is a circle, so hold shift, and click and drag out a circle. And the third is a smaller oblong ellipse that will form the head. So if we just click and drag this out, and if we use selection tool, and we can rotate this as such, maybe make this a little bigger, and maybe make this back one a little bigger. So essentially, this is our head, this is our shoulder, and this is our back leg here, if I bring this up a touch. So this is going to form the foundations of our bear. So if I just command or control minus to zoom out, and just using selection tool, I'm going to select these three, and let's just hold out our option and click and drag out to copy. That way I can create multiple bears by coming back to this point and using these shapes again. So Command or Control plus to zoom in and at any time you can use Command or Control plus or minus to zoom in and out. I'm going to be doing that a lot in this tutorial. And before we go any further, let's quickly save this file. So let's go to File, Save, Save on my computer. I'm just going to save mine in my Images folder and we'll just call this Bear SVG. For now, Adobe Illustrator file will export as SVG at the end and click Save. Press OK. Next, let's create the nose, let's zoom in, grab the pen tool, and let's create a four-sided shape just by clicking and dragging with straight lines. Select it with Selection Tool, then switch to Direct Selection Tool, and let's use the round corners to just round this shape. And if we select off and then just click and drag with the Direction Tool over this bottom round corner, we're going to bring this in even more, just so we've got a sharper point for the nose and a smoother point for the mouth. Select Selection and click Off. Now let's do the feet. Grab our Ellipse tool. Let's draw out a perfect ellipse. So hold Shift, click and drag out a circle and release. Come in with Direct Selection tool. Select this bottom anchor point and press Backspace to delete. Then let's switch to our Pen tool and hover over this left-hand anchor point till you see that dashed line. Click and then come across and hover over the second anchor point until you see that little circle. That means connect the path. Click and now we have a half circle. Select with Selection Tool, and let's go to Direct Selection again. And again, let's round these corners up. Not too much with the feet, we want the feet to be a little more chiseled. And we can also select this anchor point here and bring this down if we like, just so we've got shorter feet. Might even want to play around with this anchor point here and make this a little more defined. Can also select it with Selection Tool and use the Transform to just bring this down so that it's a lot flatter. So now we have our feet, let's select this and let's just hold shift, drag this out in proportion so that our feet are a little bigger. And now we're going to make three copies of this. So hold out our option, two, three, and four. Just for reference, if you go to view smart guides, I've got my smart guides on. I can use the smart guides to keep everything in proportion and in line with each other. So let's use the selection tool and arrange where we want the feet to go. So let's move the fourth and the second one here. So we've got one leg here, one leg here, and then the first and third can be the back leg. So we can make these a little smaller. If we hold shift, just drag these down just a little bit, and then just bring these up a touch so that they're more in the background, so these legs are in the foreground. Next, let's connect up the body. So come to our line tool, hover over on the head, and then click and drag out a line roughly to just over the top of the hind leg. We don't want to go kind of too far down, but use the smart guides to connect this up, release, and then we're going to come to our curvature tool, and then just click and drag on this line, and just try to get the curve sort of roughly in line so that the head and the back leg connects up. And if you need to do any adjustments, come back to Direct Selection Tool and you can click and move these anchor points around and you can also change the curve using the handles of the anchor points. So once we've done one line, select off and then repeat then for the lower part of the body. So again, grab my line tool. Let's just click and drag out a line, say roughly to here. Maybe let's bring this down a touch. So Selection Tool. So we want the body to be pretty thick. And remember, anytime you can adjust this as you go, so maybe you want the head a little bigger, maybe we want this hind leg to be a little bigger as well. Use the selection tool and transform tools just to adjust as you go. Select this line. Again, curvature tool, 
click, click and drag to create the curve. And then we're going to connect these two lines up. So if we switch to pen tool, hover over this line till you get that dash, click, come over till we get the little circle and connect. And then do the same this side. Hover over, click, come up here, connect. And again, if I command or control zoom, I can just make changes here using the direct selection tool. Let's just try to get this a little more in line with the edge. Press off and then command or control minus to come back out. Okay, now to add in the legs. So grab our line tool. Now, generally for the legs, we want to start in and go out. We want the legs to be thinner at the bottom by the feet and then get larger as they move into the body. So again, feel free to play around, but let's just say try this. Let's draw out a second line. Say to here, again, you can always change this using direct selection tool, just changing those anchor points. And then if we select with selection tool, come to the curvature tool, and then let's just click and drag this in. And again, selection tool, select this one, grab the curvature tool, and click and drag as such, come back to pen tool, and then let's connect these up. So hover over anchor point, click, connect up, click, do the same down here, hover over, click, connect up, and click. And there we have a completed leg. So I'm now going to go ahead and do the second and third leg, and I'll be back with you very shortly. Now that last leg can be a little tricky because you need the curve to line up with the back of this oval. So if we grab our pen tool, just hover over the path and then we click and drag out and then come down then to the bottom here, we can create a smoother curve that connects the back of the oval with the back of the foot. And then repeat process. So let's grab our line tool, click and drag out a line here, curvature, and finally, with the pen tool, let's connect these up accordingly. Press selection and click off. Let's make a copy of this. So if I command or control minus to zoom out, if I click and drag over with selection tool and hold out our option. And I'm just gonna click and drag this out off the canvas. At any time I can go back to this point then and make changes accordingly. Last thing, and I almost forgot, let's just grab our ellipse tool and let's just draw an ellipse for you, select with selection tool, and just arrange this at the top of the head as such. Now that we have our base shape drawn, let's silhouette this in and let's make changes. So selection tool, click and drag over everything on the canvas, all shapes. And basically we want to click and drag black stroke into the fill so we get a fill color and let's check off the stroke and switch back to fill and then click off. So that's what our silhouette's going to look like. You're probably going to need to make small adjustments and changes to maybe thicken out some limbs or maybe change the shape. So we can do that with a combination of selection, direct selection. So again, if we click and drag over, we can see all the different shapes here. So if we use selection tool, we can select certain shapes and just move them. And for this bit, it might be better to turn the smart guides off so you've got more control. So for example, selection tool, you know, maybe we want to make the nose longer or shorter. Maybe we want a more prominent shoulder. And also we can go in with direct selection tool. So say for example, this back leg here, maybe I want to make this back leg thicker so I can click and drag anchor points over. You know, maybe I want a larger torso here. I could come in with the ellipse tool, check off stroke and just leave the fill on, click and drag out an ellipse, select it with selection tool and maybe let's just rotate this and drag this out just so that we've got more of a torso here so that the legs don't look too thin. So play around with it, adjust it as much as you like using selection tool, direct selection tool, and the anchor points. And once you're happy, if I just command or control minus to zoom out, let's just use selection tool, select everything, move it to one side. We'll combine the shape later. Now we're going to add some text. So in some space on the canvas, let's grab my type tool. Let's center a line in the paragraph panel. Click to create some point type. And I'm just going to type out mama, select with selection tool, hold alt or option and shift, and then scale this up in proportion. And let's change the font. So I'm going to use a font called lullabies. So let's go with lullabies heavy, press enter. This is a font I get with my Adobe Cloud CC account. If you're willing to pay for premium fonts with a commercial license, you could use a service like My Fonts. If you want free fonts, you could try something like Google Fonts. But remember, always check the commercial licenses of the fonts so that you fully understand what you can and can't do in a commercial environment. Let's change the color of this so that it doesn't clash with the black bear. 
So it doesn't matter what color, let's just make it yellow because we're going to cut this out of this eventually. Just going to lock this bit in place. So let's select all of the shapes and just go to Object, Lock, Selection. And then using Selection Tool, let's click and drag my text over the top of the bit. And I can either leave this as it is, you know, say I use the Rotate Tool just to twist it slightly and maybe scale it up using the Transform options. But I could also right click, Create Outlines, right click, Ungroup. And now I have these individual letters, so I can also play around with the individual letters now that they're shapes. You know, maybe make the M a touch bigger, maybe bring the M down here, and just make the letters fit the shape of the bear a little more creatively. So something like that looks good, I'm happy with that. So once you're happy with the arrangement, we need to make two compound paths. So grab a selection tool. Let's select these four letters. So select hold shift to select two, three, and four. Let's come to Pathfinder and unite these shapes. And then we're going to go to object, compound path, and make. So our text is now a compound path. And then if we go to object, unlock all. And then let's lock the text in place. So select the text, object, lock, selection. And now grab a selection tool and let's select all of the bear shapes behind it. So I've selected the bear, the text is locked, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's unite the shape in the pathfinder and then object, compound path and make. Then object, unlock all. So we now have two shapes. We have the bear and we have the text. If you want to make a copy of this at this point, selection tool, hold out our option, click and drag out to copy. Just put it on the side there. Let's just zoom back in. So make sure your text is on top of the bear. Select both of these and simply come to Extract. And then if I just zoom out, use Selection Tool, and I click and drag this, you can see now this has been cut out of the bear. So once I'm ready to export, grab Selection Tool, select the completed bear artwork, come to your Artboard tool and click, and then come to Artboard, scroll up and select Fit to Selected Art. Selection Tool to come out. Let's just zoom in a touch here. And then let's go to File, Save As, Save on Computer. Let's save this to my Images folder, and we'll call this Bear SVG01. Switch to SVG, and select on Use Artboards Range 1. That way we only export what's on the artboard and not all the art that's off the canvas. Press Save. Now this SVG is going to be used for print. It's not being used on the web, so don't stress too much about the options. However, do set Convert to Outline just in case you haven't outlined your type. You should have to do this tutorial, but just in case you haven't. And you don't need to preserve Illustrator editing capabilities because we've got the original .ai file. This will also increase file size. So you can check this off, convert to outline, and press OK. And if I come to Finder, come to my Images folder, there's bear SVG01, open with Illustrator, and there is my SVG, ready to be scaled. Upload it to your print service, used in CryCut, and whatever else you have planned for it. So once you've done your mama bear, if you like, you can go ahead and do a papa and baby bear. So I just wanted to show you some slight adjustments you can make to the design when creating a papa version and a baby version. So key things to remember for the male version is generally you want a longer body. So from our starting point, you can see our head and our shoulder, if you kind of move this across. And then the same with the feet then, if you move the feet down, you should get longer legs and you should get a longer body. Also with the male bear version, try to make things less round and a little more chiseled. So you can see here the nose, I've used less. If I just ungroup this, you can see this nose, if I come in with direct selection, is less rounded and more chiseled. And again with the ear, rather than using a circle, you can use a rectangle selection tool and make this a rounded, and then we can come in, select these two anchor points, and use the arrow keys to pull this in, and the same then with this side, so that we get more of a chisel looking ear. And generally, as well, once you've created the Papa Bear, just scale it up, hold and shift, and make it a little bigger than the female bear. When it comes to the baby version, kind of do the opposite. So we actually want a bigger head and a much shorter body. So we can bring these two in here. We can even twist this down. So he's got a much shorter, stumpier body. And we could even make the head more of an ellipse rather than an oblong. Other things I like to do is rather than looking down at the floor because the baby's not tall enough, the baby can be looking up. So you can do that by changing the direction of the nose and the position of the ear. And also with the front foot, if I just uh, ungroup these, I twisted this foot up so it looks like he's lifting his leg up.
So by using these simple changes to design, you can make a bear that looks more like the papa bear, a shorter, smaller bear that looks like the baby. And from there, it's entirely up to you. So I've got multiple art watches, so you can have your mama, papa, and baby bear exported as separate SVGs. You could also create a scene. So for example, if I just grab the mama bear here, let's grab this baby bear, hold out our option to create a duplicate. And then if I object transform, reflect, press OK, and then maybe kind of scale down the baby bear so he's looking up at the mum, and then maybe the mum can be a little bigger as well. Hold shift, select these two, and then just to scale those down. So that could be its own SVG, could add the little baby text there as well. So feel free to play around with these SVGs as you like, get the different scenes as you're happy with them. And if you've got multiple artboards to export, you can use the export for screens option. So I'm going to export, if I come to my artboard tool, Artboard 10, Artboard 11, and Artboard 12. So if I come to my Artboard panel, and if I can't find that, go to Window, Artboards. So let's rename Artboard 10, Mama, Artboard 11, Papa, and Artboard 12, Baby, and check off the Artboards. Let's just zoom out so we can see. So I'm gonna export these three. So let's go to File, Export, Export for Screens. In Export for Screens, instead of selecting all, I'm going to select a range. So you can see I've got Mama, Papa, and Baby, 10 to 12. So I'm going to export artboards, 10 to 12. Export to, select your save location. So mine is my images folder. And create a format subfolder. And then under Format, make sure your format is set to SVG. You can also double check your SVG options in the Format settings here. So I'm happy with these. Save settings. And then simply click Export Artboard to export the three artboards. And once exported, let's locate my images folder and there's my SVG folder and there's my baby, mama and papa SVGs ready to be used in any way you see fit. And there you have it, gorgeous mama, papa and baby bear SVGs that you can use for print on demand. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing and I will see you for the next tutorial.